Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Bonus Points Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Garrett, as always been joined by my co-host, Ollie Guy. Oh, hello. Co-host, eh? Nice. You're, I guess I am. Oh yeah, sorry, your promotion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is the first I'm hearing about it. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. You, you've just been a guest up until now. I don't know if you've realised that. <laughs> yeah. um, oh no, I've done well. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. Um, anyway, yeah, so we are going to be talking about uh, Ollie's choice of game today. Do you want to set up what we're going to be discussing? We are going to be discussing Ridge Racer Type 4, as it's known in Europe, or R4 Ridge Racer Type 4, if you're in the US. Shall I read this Wikipedia entry? Mm hmm. Okay, so Ridge Racer Type 4 is a racing game developed and published by Namco for the PlayStation 1. The first PlayStation, before most of our audience was even born. It is the fourth title in the Ridge Racer series after Rage Racer and the last to be released on the PlayStation. It was released on December 3rd, 1998 in Japan and then the following year in Europe and North America. It was later re-released on the PS4, PS5 and pre-loaded on the PlayStation Classic, which was also released on December 3rd, uh, but 2018. It is the first Ridge Racer game, a series game on the PlayStation to use Guru, Guru shading, which is French. I can't say it. Uh, uh, on its polygons, which is then followed by Ridge Racer 5 in the year 2000. Okay, I, I know this is a weird place to start. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about the shading of this game. Do you, Go, do you, Go is, Go Hord shading, I think it do is. Do you know anything about that? Or, or I actually do. I look, no, I looked it up because I thought it might come up. Um, do you know about so I know it's a really weird time to start, but it's such... Uh, can I just know what that is? <laughs> so you don't know what it is at all? No. Okay, so for video uh, watch, it's very easy for me to describe because this blind next to me is a perfect example. For audio listeners, if you imagine a PS1 game, how sharp the polygons were. So say you wanted to make a curved edge, you would have like one flat one, then you'd have another flat one at an angle, then a flat one underneath to kind of make this fake curve. You used to only be able to light each of those polygons one at a time. So you'd have the light one on the top, the medium one at the side, and the dark one at the bottom. Guhud shading, guhard shading, means you can do it as one gradient. And it was one okay. of the first games to ever do that. And um, they were so happy with what they did that the team that made the game were like, we're not releasing games on the PS1 anymore because graphics cannot get any better than this. That's what they wow. said. Also, so, the PS2 was coming out. <laughs> yeah. And that, might and have been that. another moment. Well, a couple factor. of years. No, no. A couple of years after this came out, it was PS2. But still, yeah. The um, <laughs> So the fact they weren't shading polygons individually and instead were shading them as a group, that's basically yep. what it means. Okay. So there you go. Cool. So anyway, so now we've got that out of the way. It's a racing game. <laughs> it is a racing game. Um, so have, have you played this before? I got this game as a kid to the day it came out. Oh, okay. Um, but Did you play I it? Was, <laughs> I played it, but I was also eight years old, so I don't remember. The only thing I could really remember is the, the menus were cool, yeah. and there's a track that has a big jump in it, which is the yeah. seventh track. That's all I could remember. I know about. the one, and there's a sharp turn to the right straight <laughs> yes, after it. I know, I, I know all these tracks well now. Yes. So, so I guess you must have had fond memories, at least, of it, to, to be wanting to choose it for the podcast. Uh, yeah, so a friend of the show, Josh Brown, who came on for the XCOM episode, when me and him worked together, we always used to put the soundtrack on in the office, which was his pick. And I was like, oh my God, it is actually really good. And he was like, the game is actually really good. And I just didn't remember it very well. Um, so I was like, let's check it out. Let's go back and see if it actually is as good as everyone says. Um, and then... What's your experience with other Ridge Racer games? I played maybe Ridge Racer 6 on the Xbox 360. And I played Ridge Racer 1, but obviously I was very young. I don't remember having it. Um, and then I played one with you on the PSP. <laughs> yeah. Ridge Racer 2, I think. Uh, yeah, with the, yeah with the, on the PSP there was two. There was one called Ridge Racer, which yep. is a... Con confusing and then i think ridge racer 2 <laughs> which yeah. was which i think was like the sixth one release or something but yeah. um yeah i guess they kind of get away with it for a portable one so what did you think so my overall impressions i'm not going to try and play the game when we try and pretend and hide what we really think i think the overall impressions of this game is unbelievable amount of polish unbelievable amount of content but it all seems to be in the wrong place <laughs> it's my overall overall thoughts like there is an insane amount of cars in this game and there's only eight tracks and it's like it's good it's great it's a great game it's really fun but the amount of content is so lopsided it's like 
I'm not going to possibly ever drive all these cars because I only have eight tracks or 16 because they do a mirror version. So that's generally, and also the, the, the map polish is great. The menus are beautiful. The music's great. But generally that's where I was on it. I think the thing is, is like you can say like, oh, if they spent that time making more tracks, but like the amount of effort to make a new car, which is, you know, because they all handle basically one of two ways. It's not like they're really yeah, yeah. custom. And there's so there's 320 cars technically, yes. te- technically, but a lot of them are like variations. <laughs> of, yeah, yeah. Of the, is, so yeah. they're basically the same. So, you know, like to slightly rearrange those polygons and say like, this is the type S version of yeah, the car. Yeah, yeah. That compared to like making like a whole new track and all of the art along the side and designing it and balancing well, it. Like, well, 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 well. Before we get into that, six of the tracks share environments. So it's the yeah. same environment and it's just different roads through that. But it's still that that's that's a lot more work than the cars. And also maybe just take up much more space on the disc. Yeah, this I is an era so. where the size of the, the, the disc, the amount of data available is a factor. Yeah, but it's a fun game. I don't want to take away from being a fun game. I finished it three times, three different GPs. I almost finished it four times, but those grip cars, man. They are hard to drive. And I did one in a grip car and I was like, I can't finish this. It's too difficult. Yeah. So, do you want to talk about like the, the difference between the drift and the grip cars? Yeah. So like basically the hype, you know, this game mostly is focused around GP, which is like 70% racing, 30% visual novel. Um, so you kind of join a team. And then when you join the team, uh, they ask you which car manufacturer you want. And half the car manufacturers are drift. So they control like pretty much like a Mario Kart. And then the other half is grip. They don't really control like a real car, but they also don't really control like a drift car either. They're kind of hard to drive. Um, I didn't find them anywhere near as much fun. This is the first Ridge Racer game where they've introduced grip cars as well. So I think they were trying to get some of that Gran Turismo, you know, some of that audience, which I don't know whether or not it worked, but they're kind of the two sorts of cars. Um, So yeah, you you go through this GP mode and depending on where you come in each race, you speak to people, you speak to your your manager between each race, and they will say different things depending on how well you did. And that's like a surprisingly large amount of the game is talking to these people that have these like, some of the stories are quite good. Like I was, a couple of them, I was like, this is actually more than I was expecting. But that's kind of the long and the short of the actual game story mode and the game and the most of the content is 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 from here and can we just say for these stories like i know people are probably imagining a type of story it's all about like you gotta win the race and get first place but they get like weirdly personal and like emotional and like there's the um i think it was the italian one where they end up like talking about like they had their partner and their partner died and they blame themselves but then you let them forgive them and then like it does like the credits and it's like really emotional comes up with a text like this is a direct quote saying will you forgive me if i have a dream again <laughs> like comes yeah, up on screen yeah. and it's like wait this is rich racer wait a minute what is, yeah, what, is yeah. what is this this tone that we're we're going for here with this story well all of the gps uh sorry the one gp you do you play it from multiple angles every different team you can play as it's half a year it runs in real uh, real time it runs in you know like real time half a year and it ends at the turn of the century, which I think is very cool that they bothered to make the effort to do that. And these people that you race with, your managers and your teammates, are like kind of going through turning points in their lives. And it was enough for me to be like, I need to finish this next one so I can see what happens. So the ones I did, I did Mappy. Did you do Mappy? Which is the woman in the arranged marriage? No, is that the French one? Yes, that's the easy mode. Yeah, I, I, did, I did Italian that. and Japan. Japan. She did PRC, which was the guy who accidentally killed his teammate by uh, trying to overtake him. Yeah. And then the Italian one, the guy, the manager is the dad of the guy that died. And his story is like, my son was always looking for the perfect race and he always wanted to perfect every corner. And and then he comes down on you really hard. But in the end, he's like, actually, no, just I just want you to live and have fun. And yeah, like, yeah. He's like, great. <laughs> like, yeah, at first he was like nothing other than first place. And at the end, he's like, no, yeah. just like try your best. He always seemed a bit disappointed. Like if you did win, he always seemed a bit disappointed. <laughs> like, well, he was you, like, he was like, I'm won. genuinely, I'm genuinely afraid for your life if you keep racing the way you are. Yeah. It's, it's cool. It's a really cool little, considering how minimal it is. I, think I didn't maybe think there was going to be any story. Like I did, yeah, I yeah. had no expectations for any story at all. And the fact that there's so much of it. Like, oh no, there is a lot. It there was a lot. quite surprising. 
It is a lot. I think the um, the overall presentation really helps with it. Like, obviously, it looks old now, as in you can tell it's being held back by its the hardware. But in terms of the menus and stuff, it's so slick looking. Oh yeah, that, that it's like, screen, it looks like Luminez. <laughs> yeah, the, the the screen where you're like, it's like it's showing you the track, and it mm. has like the line of the track and like kind of like little blocks, like kind of like almost like as if it's driving around the track, mm. but like really mm. minimalist. Like that screen is like incredible. Like the graphics design on it and like yeah. the loading screens are, are slick. Like the presentation from like the, the UI and like the menus is like amazing. Mm. Yeah. And the, um, the in-game graphics as well. I mean, obviously they're dated, but I think the atmosphere is like spot on. They really nailed that. The one, the one thing I did notice about the graphics that once I noticed it, I was like, it's actually quite annoying is that the cars never turn their headlights on. So it's okay. like you're racing quite a lot of time in the dark. And if you're playing in the day, like I was, it's just like I just couldn't see the screen. And it's like, and I noticed that none of the headlights were on, but obviously they couldn't, probably couldn't yeah, be on because of the, the lighting PS1. is probably baked in, isn't it? Yeah. Why yeah it looks like, you know, all the textures have the light. I did notice that when you go in like a tunnel and that, you can see like the brake lights, like just oh, the yeah. glow of the red bat lights, like they kind of like fade in when you go into yeah. a tunnel and then fade out. I did notice that little detail. And then also like another nice touch, almost kind of like, almost like a like anime style is like the the headlights leave like a stream of like light mm. like around corners especially in like yeah. replays like that's kind of a little bit exaggerated from real life is quite cool yeah it's cool the the in-game brands as well are all like pretty well realized they're all references to namco obviously i don't know what um solvalu is but the other ones being pac-man mappy and dig dug were obvious and then around the edge of the track they also have a lot of like namco things i think that's back yeah. when namco were more famous for being namco than they are now <laughs> yeah because bridge race obviously its roots is as an arcade game like the mm. the first one was so i kind of and obviously then there was ports to, to playstation and then you know this was obviously a dedicated playstation one but obviously if it's trying to stay ridge racer it's kind of keeping a lot of those arcadey roots so a lot of the mm. racers well all of the racers apart from time trials is you start at the very back of the race and it's like evenly spread out opponents like you you don't feel like you're you feel like even if you're against opponents you're doing a time trial and then yeah. they're just almost like the markers of how far through the the race you are there's very little like back and forth racing or i mm -hmm. overtook them they overtook me it's like you are always overtaking them if you mess up <laughs> they, they might overtake you again yeah, rarely, like, there's though. not much like car to car bumper to bumper action really you kind of mm. just zoom past them <laughs> Yeah, and also the layout of the other cars racing is always the same. Like, your teammate is always in fourth, like the midpoint of the race. And it's kind of like, it does spoil it a little bit when you notice that, that it's just them driving around. And I'm not sure how good their technique is for punishing, like, bumps. Because, like, if you bump another car, so as in you're the one who initiated the bump, you'll slow down and they'll carry on a regular speed. It just doesn't always work like you'd expect like sometimes you'll be drifting and you'll hit someone but you'll kind of be like they're in the way they should move as gulani said <laughs> you should yeah. not you should let your teammate through you should let opponents through sometimes I mean, it they're, works, they're sometimes obstacles it rather than other yeah. races is the way i saw it they're almost like in a burnout game they're not the other races they're the traffic is the way that mm. i kind of mm. saw the the other races <laughs> yeah for sure um but yeah i mean this is a this is a fun game. It's cool. It's definitely aged, but I feel like 100% it's more the hardware than it is the gameplay in the presentation. What, 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 what's aged? It just doesn't... It's just like that PS1, man. Lumpy PS1 graphics. All the polygons wiggling. Like, that's the reason we haven't really done any... If, this might even be the first PS1 game we've done, I think. Or N64, that, that era. I bet out of most... 3d ps1 games i bet this is one of the ones that's actually aged the best just yeah the yeah this you're is just like, using the yeah. d-pad there's no camera <laughs> controls apart from you know first person view or see the car like that that's it so yeah. like like gameplay wise it's not aged hugely i wonder because mm. I, I i was really impressed by the graphics and i i well, you know obviously they have aged compared to like mm. forza or, or whatever whatever but i wonder is because i played it on the vita which is obviously uh, a smaller screen yeah. anyway, but then also the Vita's like a widescreen display. And so I'm playing it in like a square in the middle. Yeah. So I'm playing like quite a small screen. So I wonder if if you're playing this on your PS5 on your big TV. I, I, I bet I wonder I bet your version 
inadvertently looked better, but then also looked worse <laughs> because yeah, you could see I, more of it. It's just that that about the PS One for me. One of the things that ruins the console is the fact that the polygons wiggle; they can't stay <laughs> yeah. still. And I was reading about it like it was beyond my comprehension of what. But basically, it's because. It, it was difficult to like nail down the textures to like the grid, the same grid as the polygons, which is why they shift, which is actually yeah. what's happening. But yeah, I don't know. It, it's 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 cool. It's great. It felt like a PS One game. <laughs> Looking at it, I think main, because the game's like, so fast, I didn't yeah. like that wiggle. Like once again, maybe it's just because the small screen. Like maybe when it's like starting the race and the camera's going down or replays. But when I'm yeah. racing, like I didn't really spot that at all. It looked pretty solid. The when you see the footage, um, you one thing that I noticed was one of the car, one of the teams. I think it's Solvolo. They have a blue streak down the middle of their car, and on my recording, you can see the blue streak is just doing this the whole time. Like it can't center; it's just wibbling. And then once I noticed that, it was a bit like a downward slope from there. But I mean, the game, the game is good. It's the hardware. It's the hardware that I'm not a fan of. It's like yeah, every game from this generation, I always think like, oh yeah, I'll play the newer version of it or like the re-released version of it but Ridge Racer Type 4 doesn't really have that so this is kind of the only way to play it whereas I think like Ocarina of Time if I was to play that I'd play the 3DS version which I know loads of people are going to be like oh my god but it's just easier it's got it's got better hints or like Metal Gear Solid maybe I'll play Twin Snakes because it looks nicer but like Ridge Racer Type 4 this is it that's what you got to deal with yeah, so how does it compare to more modern Ridge Racer games? Uh, well, it doesn't have Nitrous, does it? No. Which is a big thing in Ridge Racer. Basically, basically uh, Need for Speed Underground came out and Burnout came out and they changed all of racing games <laughs> forever. <laughs> and every game after that had to have Nitrous and this game didn't. And that was actually... I forgot they didn't have Nitrous until I loaded it up because of the PSP one that me and you played. It's quite a big part of it. Yeah. I don't have anything more to say. <laughs> okay, yeah, I mean, about that, yeah, so with the PSP one, it, it yeah. basically, the way Nitros works is as you drift, it builds up your Nitros and then you, Nitrous, and then you press like a, a button and it launches you. And that is a big thing about timing and are mm. you going to risk using your Nitros when you're on a turn and trying to, to mm. control it? Because as you say, so I played this, the PSP Ridge Racer game, which I have here for, oh, for wow. people watching the, the video nice. version. Um, because I, I was super excited about playing this game because I played this game like a lot. This is this may be my most played PSP game. It's between this and Luminous. Mm. Like I loved this game, and it's the only Ridge Racer game I've played. Like certainly for any amount of time. And obviously, I played that on a PSP. And so when you were like, "Oh, to do Ridge Racer," and I was like, oh, "Okay," and then I was like, "Oh, could I play it on the Vita?" And I was like, "I can." And I was like, "I'm gonna relive my glory days. I'm gonna be playing Ridge <laughs> Racer on like a handhold like PlayStation. Yeah, yeah. Like this is gonna be a good two weeks." And it was, but. I obviously, I understand it's a PlayStation game. I did not yeah. realise the disparity that there was going to be. I didn't I didn't know how much Rid Racer had progressed by the time we got to the PSP one. Like, obviously yeah. visually and stuff, but I think, like, the the handling is extremely difficult, like, uh, different. Like, on the PSP version, like, it's, like, super slidey. Like, it's super easy yeah, just yeah. to, like, go down a straight road, like, sideways, which, like... Yeah. And, and, like, the, the big thing is, like, you can drift so easily... The challenge is to control it so you're not losing all your speed by drifting mm. too much. Like getting around the corner isn't the challenge in it. The challenge is to like drift just enough to keep your your speed. And I, I to my own horn, I got really good at the PSP game because I played yeah. it for like hundreds of hours. And I, I kind of went into to this game expecting it to to be the the same. And it controls very differently. It's a much more of a stiff drift, I guess. It always feels like the mm. car wants to stop drifting all the time and you've got to, like, fight for it mm -hmm. to keep going. And then I think the, the other big difference is kind of the speed, both in, like, the car speed and then also the PSP game runs at 60 FPS mm -hmm. and this one runs at, like, almost 30 FPS. At least on I, think, the I, think it's like a, I think it's like a solid 30. I watched the Digital Foundry about it and they said it's a good, it's a good 30. Oh, okay, might might be the the Vita one, or maybe it's yeah. just my. I mean, I didn't run any tools. This was just from my perception. Maybe just the comparison to the the mm, PSP mm -hmm. one going like directly that. back yeah. and forth. And so, you know, like I I ended I did play them them back and forth, and it was always kind of hard to put the PSP one down and go back yeah, to this yeah. one. And I get it; it's an unfair comparison. The PlayStation one came out first, and it's on less powerful hardware, but like 
it was if you think of like the line like this is the line for video people i'm holding up my hand this is the line where <laughs> it's in line like, with his mouth for audio <laughs> listeners <laughs> yeah the, the line here is for like what the game needs to have for me to like fall in love with it and yeah. the psp one's on one side of the line and the playstation one is on the other side of the, the yeah, line yeah. despite their their similarities like it it wasn't good enough for me to be like gotta do one more race like it was mm, more mm. Got to play it enough to talk about it on the podcast. I'm having fun yeah, while I'm yeah, doing it, but yeah. like there is something else I'd probably rather be playing. Um, so that's kind of my my first impression, I guess, of the the game. I think the handling and the drifting has become standardized, which like became standardized after Ridge Racer Four. It's kind of like drifting now. It's kind of like any game that is arcadey. You can pick it up and you can pull off like an almost perfect drift just because it's more or less the same. Whereas this game does not feel like that. To drift in this game, you don't even have to use the brake. You just let go of the accelerator and press it again. Yeah, That is the same as the PSP one. That is... Oh, is it? Okay. That is is the same, yeah. (laughs) There was a time I was playing this one and I was like hammering circle, like, oh yeah, I'm going to initiate a drift. For like five races, I looked up on mine. Circle's not even a button that you use. It doesn't do anything. Square Square is brake. (laughs) So like, that's how difficult it is to drift. Is I thought I was doing it right and it wasn't. (laughs) But the... Yeah, I think that that is a big difference It's a standardization obviously 60 fps the mad thing is as well about you saying that you can play a straight comparison is if you bought ridge racer type 4 physical back in the day it came with a copy of ridge racer 1 which they had made again in 60 fps so you had the comparison yourself as well the other thing is i wonder if this game's capped at 30 because it has split screen maybe they were like we need to do that because i mean maybe it's just how graphically impressive it was because if you yeah. do a direct comparison between ridge Way- racer one and uh type four like type four looks like almost like a generation a generation like, job, yeah, the, yeah the first one it's so it's almost like too bright and clean like it looks like an arcade game like yeah. it, it looks like yeah what you'd expect from from a game of like early playstation or arcade game whereas like i, I don't know what they're doing whether it's just this this rendering technique you were talking about mm, but it looks mm-hmm. so much more real and has like tone it almost looks like it's got more post-processing like a lot of the races take place at like night or like that golden hour and mm. it like it looks like it has a personality whereas the original ridge racer looks like i have created an asset and i have put it in <laughs> and that's where it goes you know like, it looks like there's no I know exactly what you mean th- there's no, it's like there's no none of the things are none of the things in the original ridge racer are like connected like yeah. none of them are exist in the same plane whereas this one <laughs> Yeah, it's all much more, you know. But the, the other thing is about me saying about the content is that it has like a really impressive intro video for the time. Yeah. Apparently that intro video took two years to make. Yeah. And it's just as I was saying, like all this content and it all kind of feels like it's in the wrong place. <laughs> like the intro video is cool. Don't get me wrong. But also it's like, I've watched it now. But it does yeah. set the scene. It does set the scene of that like luxurious lifestyle being a racer. The... um. I do have video of the of the intro cutscene, but for audio listeners, it's basically like a pre-rendered race around like beautiful locations, and then uh, there's a woman at the side of the road whose heel breaks on her shoe, and one of the race drivers pulls over and picks her up, and like that is quite cool that it like really nails the feeling of the game like in one little scene, but also it did take two years to make, which is mental. So, but it, it shows where <laughs> it shows where their priorities were. Like they yeah. they're obviously they're with their design doc for this game for their list of priorities obviously like that tone and style mm, and atmosphere mm. like that was pretty high up because you know they'd, they'd worked out the racing already like they had proven successful at that they didn't need to reinvent the wheel no pun intended <laughs> for, for, for the racing but it had an atmosphere and it's, it's a weird mix because it looks closer to something like a gran turismo or a sim mm. racer but it is an arcadey game like through and through like it's a it's a weird mix. It's almost like, oh, some people who might be put off by arcadey games, they see like Outrun and they're like, oh, yeah. it's like kiddy or silly or cheesy. Yeah. It's like, no, 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 like we can have that arcadey fun, but this is like, but it, but you'll look cool like when you're doing it. Like, I, I think that's yeah. maybe what they're going for. And it was successful. This game sold over a million copies, which for like that time is like great. Yeah, the vibes and that, they really went for that late, late 90s, 2000 vibe. And they absolutely nailed it. Like, it does feel like you're back then for us because we live for it. Like, it, you are literally transported back to then, which is super cool. Like, not many games. It's like a period piece. 
<laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like it literally yeah. is like a period. Especially with the um the music, which I know you mentioned earlier that you that you like the music, but we haven't spoke too much about it because that's quite unique for a racing game as well. Yeah, it's like um kind of like lounge music, but mixed with like drum and bass. Really like funky kind of music, really cool. Like I think there's about fifteen songs in the soundtrack. Um and yeah, they all bang. The the theme song is also really good. The opening theme song with the, with yeah. the cutscene, and then the fact that that song comes back as, as the last race. Yeah, music for last and race. I, know, I, I love it. It's got like the game name in it as well. Like, yes. it's like Ridge yes. Racer. <laughs> like it's like singing so it. Good. Like because I did. Um, I I did play like start playing a bit of it. I was like, oh, I put a podcast on and like turn mm. the sound down. And I was like, it's not the same. I was like, I had to, no, I had to turn the, the podcast off. And like and the the car the car noises as well. The with the diegetic sound as well. Um, that's. Yeah. That's all really good. I did find that the first person view, which is always the default view, even if you switch mm. it, you have to press triangle mm-hmm. to switch it every time, like is a little bit too bouncy. Like sometimes you feel a little oh, bit really? like you're driving a boat and like when you're accelerating and like the camera's bobbing up and down. Yeah. Um, because I did tend to play in that. Like I, I think I'm better at playing in, in that view, um, but I did find that was maybe... But how do you t- how do you do a drift where you can't see where you're going? Yeah, I mean, there's always a trade. There's a trade off for either, like because yeah. like the first person view, I like that I can see people behind me, and like I think I feel like you just because I'm closer to the road, I can like place the car a little bit more accurately. Mm. But then the the other view, obviously, you can see much better, like if you're drifting where the back of the car is compared to mm-hmm. a barrier, and if like there's cars either side of you. But like I would switch back and forth, and I ended up feeling i had better control being like because the first person view is like not like it's not a cockpit view it's like first person like you're like it's scraping like the along plate. the ground <laughs> yeah, and i, fa- I found that like, easier and more of a sense of speed of the car. Yeah, yeah it looks really fast in first it's person. like in a modern car like the the camera for like parking it's like that camera <laughs> like right down on like the bonnet <laughs> yeah yeah, no, I definitely stuck to third person. I didn't even consider using first person to be honest with you. I just changed. So it. you just switched every time because the, the yeah, game yeah, wants you like, to be yeah. to be first person. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Did you um unlock any weird cars? So I did. I don't think I unlocked any, but like when you complete the GP, you get like this trial mode where you mm. they're almost like against bosses, and like the first one of those, I was like a Pac Man car, but I wasn't. Oh, okay. I wasn't able to like win. I assume I get that car if I beat that race, but I wasn't good enough. <laughs> that's the that's the final. Was it the car that actually looks like Pac Man? No, it was just okay. had like <laughs> like it had like a pa- Pac Man like decals on, and it looked weird. It looked almost like Batmobile shape. It's not. The, oh, okay, I know the other one you're talking about, yeah. which is like a big Pac Man face. Like I I have seen that. I think that's like the last car you that's get out of like get, the 320. Yeah. yeah, I did. I did not do that. <laughs> so there's basically so there's four there's twenty cars per team. And there's four cars that each have four stages. So you get like the four shapes of the car and then each of them has stage one to four. And then the final car for each team you unlock by beating that boss, the extra trial boss car. But I feel like that's kind of impossible unless you've unlocked the highest level one you can because it's so fast. Yeah. But I've seen some of them online, like the the super high end ones. And there's one that just flies doesn't even have wheels <laughs> yeah it's like an anti-gravity car which is super cool that they do that and it's like they just completely don't care about realism and they're like all oh, the pac-man car which of, is literally um, pac-man crazy taxi where you can do the cheat and you're like riding like a bike <laughs> a instead bike. but it controls like a car like, <laughs> yeah just, why not it's funny yeah it's cool it's 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 fun it's definitely a fun vibe um and the music does does a lot to help with that um yeah i think I've, I've I've pretty much said it all. <laughs> what so, there is for well, me to say? <laughs> well, one one other question I had for you because I didn't engage with it, but I did glance through your footage and saw that you did a bit. Was like you can do like custom decals. Like is oh, yeah. that is that system any good or any fun? <laughs> I, no, I didn't know what I was doing. You just kind of draw, and then you can choose a car. So basically, you have your garage, which is just the cars that are at the top of the menu when you start a new game. So you can pull them from the like. 320 put them in your garage and of those you can change the color and draw decals which is like another extra bit of content that's like you didn't need that but it's cool that it's there but i didn't bother but i did see that you can use the playstation one memory card icons you can pull them in and use them as decals which is quite a cool touch um yeah. but yeah i didn't i didn't do anything more than that <laughs> okay. God, too and then there, there is also multiplayer which i'm assuming 
you didn't really get a chance to I've play only got with. one controller I've only got one controller yeah. Yeah, it's obviously but I know that could... it's it's only it's only two cars so you wouldn't get any AI okay so it would just be you against your your friend or whoever you're playing against hmm mm. yeah yeah that's it um one other thing about the game that I do really like is I find all of the design work I think maybe as a kid I really liked all the design in it like the graphic design mm-hmm to the point where I remembered that as an adult. Maybe that was somewhat influential in my career. I don't know. It is something that I always think about when I'm like designing something. I do think, oh yeah, Ridge Racer Type 4. Like they did it like this, so I'll do it like this. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think from looking at it from now, it's the most impressive part of the game. Because, you know, <laughs> because from because of the game, it's a game of that era. Yeah. I feel like if you touched up those designs, like they would look like top tier today whereas obviously all of the other aspects has been gradually improved but mm. you know the the, the 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 designs of the menus aren't so hardware limited like the the rest yeah. the rest of the the game so yeah so i think that is kind of one area that that kind of really does hold up today you don't think the music holds up today um yeah no i think the music does as well but i, I think the music's mm. like like most games have good music <laughs> like that's kind true, of it's like true. it's almost a, a like a point when there isn't good music because like most games hire like professional musicians and they mm. make a good music so i guess it stands out a little, little, little bit less to me whereas a lot of games like have really bad menus i think there's a lot of yeah. modern games especially like online shooters and kind of a lot of games of like kind of storefronts and like battle passes and like so i think like the ui is often messy and convoluted and quite ugly and so mm. i actually feel like compared to a lot of those like ridge racer comes out really favorably yeah i think um this is a series that i think is due a comeback like a proper one not like a mobile game or something i mean do you like think arcade, it will <laughs> maybe i mean arcade racers they arcade racers generally need to make a comeback i think we kind of you know, the burnouts of the world are gone need for speed is hanging on and now we've got like a uh, mud skipper, whatever it's called, mud mud rudder, and like Gran Turismo, and like that's kind of it. <laughs> For I suppose Forza Horizon is quite arcadey, but not in the same way. No, as it's still pretty simmy. It's still quite yeah. It's simmy with like silly overtones, but like the actual racing is still kind of based on that, you know, pure Forza it's like sim design. Yeah, I think I will buy. Ridge Racer on the PS5. The, the PSP version you can buy on your PS5. It's so good. It is so I like, know, I know it's, it's good. I know it's, it's good. It's made me want to buy a new PSP because my, my PSP is like so the the right button and square are both like mushy and get like stuck in. I've got loads of dead pixels and the battery doesn't work. I gotta play a bit plugged in. And it was <laughs> yeah. and it made me sad because I've got so many PSP games. So it's I've been literally looking up like refurbished PSPs, but there's I'm always just too scared that I'm gonna end up with another one well, like the look, one I have. <laughs> buy a Ridge Race on the PS5 and then if you get PSP you can transfer it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. But I've got yeah, I, I wanna play it. Portable. Mm. I mean, you know me. I love portable. <laughs> like yeah. gaming is like my favorite thing. So I like I I keep thinking. I know we go super off topic, but like I always feel like there's never going to be a better time to buy a PSP than now. As in, like it's only oh, going yeah, to they're every, only going to yeah. get more rare and more expensive and more broken and more water damaged or batteries exploding or whatever. Like there's oh, never going to be a better time than now. Like a, I want to. You'll have to buy a memory one. stick duo. Do you remember those? The little. They called memory stick duos, the little like memory card thing that was like so expensive. I know. I think how expensive are they going to be now? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But I guess guess they're probably not aging as much as like screens and batteries and buttons that are being pressed a thousand times. Yeah, yeah. True, true. Um, I do think about Ridge Racer Type Four though is that they set out to do something, and they have nailed it. Mm -hmm. Like it is a good game. It's a good racing game. It's aged, but. You know, when we when we talked about other games and it's been like, have they set out to do what they do? Yes. Is there anything you'd add? I mean, I'll probably add a few more tracks. But apart from that, it's it's cool. I've, I've had a good two weeks playing this. I've not played it that much because it's so short that three and a bit play freeze probably took me about six hours. Um, also, the game's really easy until you start messing on the expert high-end difficulties. But easy and normal is like a cakewalk. Like, you might as well be racing on your own. 
Yeah, and they not... give you like loads of if you fail, you can try again three times, and yeah, also you yeah. can just save at every bit. So like, there's there's very little cost for failure. Um, that does um, affect the car you unlock, though. I think. Yeah, like... sometimes they're like, "Here's your new car," and they're like, "It's your old car," but now <laughs> yeah, you can go. It. They're like, "Good luck." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that even that's quite cool though because you get the old car back and then like the guy will ring you and be like oh we actually ran out of money so you've yeah. had to give you your old it's quite cool that they they bothered to do yeah that. yeah the dialogue can change by the way you play yeah. but i mean like you're saying like i think there's like through looking at these games through a modern lens mm. i don't think there's many that we would come to like putting them on the list that would do better than ridge racer like obviously you could look at something like final fantasy 7 or metal gear solid and it's like oh yeah, that was a more influential game that like mm. evolved the industry. But if we're looking for like, what's a good game to play in 2024? Like, I think Ridge Racer is probably pretty high up for the PlayStation library, you know, for Yeah, well, for I mean, they, include, they included controls. it on the PlayStation Classic, Ridge Racer yeah. Type 4. Yeah. It's, it's just a... I do miss this era of games when I think maybe they weren't as expensive to make. People were more willing, maybe not this game in particular, but companies were more willing to do something a bit more out there and a bit more risky because it wasn't like going to bankrupt them and have to fire 10,000 people or whatever like is happening today. And I do really miss that era of games like PS1, PS2, like, oh, here's a weird game on a demo disc. Play it, play it like 300 times on the demo disc and yeah. then like pick it up from a bargain bin for like three pounds, like those were good times, and this did really remind me of those times. So that was also quite nice. Yeah, I mean, we, we've spoken about it a lot, but that sort of like B tier game where it's like not quite triple A, but like yeah, you know, like it almost, al- almost kind of was the triple A of the the day because there weren't many games that had you know apart from what I mentioned, things like Final Fantasy or or um, Metal Gear Solid or, or or something like this was just what games were. Whereas now, mm. you know, you look at like apparently like the new Spider Man game cost like three hundred million dollars yeah, to like make, yeah, and it's sort yeah. of you know it's, it's like very crazy, impressive, man. but it's also like isn't that so scary? Because if it doesn't hit, yeah, it, you know, like that could well. I mean, it's happening. You just see the layoffs across the industry, and yeah. you know, I I think it's because we're so graphics and technology focused now. But then I look at a lot of for when we're recording this recent hits things like Helldivers 2 or like Power World like none of them are like technical showcases like they're just mm-hmm. like a, an idea that like caught on and like people found were fun to play like that's what a lot of these surprise hits are and i think that you know it'd be kind of cool if these giant companies used the resources to like to fire more bullets rather than fire bigger bullets yeah. i think yeah. you know but yeah, I mean, they have whole teams having these discussions and they think they know better. So we'll, uh, we'll yeah. see how it goes. <laughs> they think they know better. Um, the other thing is with this is that Namco were swinging back in the day. Back in the day, you used to have a little Namco thing on the box. You'd be like, this game, you know this game's going to be great. So what else in that era then? So like, this is like late 90s. Tekken. Tekken. Soul Calibur. Uh, Time Crisis was Namco. There's just there's three of the biggest games on the PlayStation like <laughs> named straight away. The Dig Dug. Yeah, it's it's uh, very, very you games as well. Like yeah. people, not other people might not know, but these are very Ollie centric games. Uh Mr. Driller was also this period, the Mr. Driller one. Yeah. All just absolute bangers. Katamari. Come on. Yeah. Like, I mean, that was a bit later, but only a couple of years later. But that was like back in the day. And then when they joined of Namco Bandai. It wasn't it anymore. Like, obviously, now they have Elden Ring and From games. They tend to publish those, which is amazing and great. But they don't have that same library anymore. No, and also they're not making them. And it's actually recently come out that, like, From Software have kind of got the rights to Elden Ring. So as it is in for, like, future things. So that's Mm. not even locked into to them now. Yeah, yeah. But no, lovely little look at the past, this, I think. did, Did anyone else join us? And uh, send in any questions. <clears throat> well, we got a, we got a few long comments, but they're nice comments, so I'm going to read them out now. Jimmy Russell's uh, nine eight oh seven on YouTube said, "I remember renting this game from Extravision. Think like Blockbuster, but in Ireland uh, slash Northern Ireland. My parents got it for me on a weekend in the summer, and when I turned it on and saw the intro movie, I was just amazed." I remember resetting the console and watching it over and over without actually playing the game. Eventually, I did play it, but at the age of 11, I wasn't really into driving games, so all I remember is the intro. <laughs> Which is like... See? I, they put yeah. the money in the right place! They, <laughs> they made that movie! 
<laughs> Maybe they did. This is something we talked about. I think it was when we talked about Tony Hawk's at some point where I was like, when you used to get a Tony Hawk's game, it was like getting a game and an album. Yeah. So I guess getting this is like getting a game and a little movie at the beginning as well. Um, we also have The Real Detenshi on YouTube who said, been looking forward to this one for a long time. I actually found this game in a really strange way. I was sitting in my engineering class a few years ago and the teacher put on a video demonstrating how one of the CNC machines worked. And as much as I tried to pay attention, the music was unreasonably good and that I literally wrote down the URL of the video, hoping to be able to find the video later. And fortunately got it right. Description of the video said the song was Move Me from Ridge Racer Type 4 and that night I downloaded and emulated it for the game and played for hours. This was the first time I got properly into a racing game other than Mario Kart. I remember finding the graphics incredible for a PS1 game, especially in the nighttime with the car's taillights. It's definitely a learning curve, especially with drifting, but I genuinely love this game. And that that comment, when I was Googling up like Ridge Racer Type 4, like what people are saying today, that seems to be a lot of people are just like, this is my favorite racing game ever made. You know, I absolutely love this game. And I kind I kind of get it. I can see why you would. Not my, my favorite racing game ever personally, but I get it, you know? What is? I really like... It depends. I love OutRun. OutRun 2. But it depends whether or not you count that as racing. If it was like raw racing it's probably be forza horizon 4 the england one i think i think we can, you can count outrun in racing it's okay in that case enough. then it would be outrun it would be outrun <laughs> yeah, and outrun also account. had loads of great content on it as well so yeah i think mine would be the old i think it would be Ridge PSP, racer, Ridge PSP. Racer. yeah i think it would just be out um burnout 3 would probably be number two and i mean that would definitely beat out in terms of time time played but uh Ridge racer would but i think mm. i I've had more fun with with that than I mean I'm not a big racing game fan so it's not like yeah I'm no like, me neither oh like no, me looking neither. down this giant list but you know I've played Forza games and Gran Turismo and stuff but I think PSP Ridge Racer like if if there's any takeaway from this video is go and play that maybe the PS5 version I promise yeah. you it holds up and for talking about like content it's got like 24 courses it has like and basically no. albums of music like if you scroll through oh it's like different God. discs of music on it and I'm like still this. has loads of cars and like it's like this world tour mode instead of grand prix is like huge and the menus are also like oh, maybe not as distinct as this they're a bit more they're a bit more clean and minimalist mm, but still mm. excellently done and like the voiceover and stuff like it is that that is a game that i kind of wish we were putting on the yeah. list but we're, but we're not but this will be oh, my time to talk about um, it you didn't hate this game did you i, I didn't but I, I i had my ex my expectation was like oh it's gonna be that like but like a bit like worse graphics kind of like, yeah, i thought yeah. i thought it was i thought it was gonna have nitros i thought it was gonna have the speed and i thought it was gonna have that the drifting that i like but mm -hmm. it didn't and i, I mm -hmm. appreciate it for its own value but like i was looking up like Tip, well, when I first playing, I was like, "Oh, this drifting feels weird." So I was mm. looking up like just tips for drifting. Yes, and they were like, I did the same. They thing. were like, "You kind of want to like activate the drift really early, where it does yeah. the squealing noise, but you don't turn yet, so you're drifting but driving straight. But then you can turn suddenly." Mm. And I was like, "Okay, it's very like, um, like technical and like almost mm. not like controlling the car, but almost like." using like kind of tech in terms of like exploiting the engine is the way to the game engine is is the way to, to do it and i was like okay it's very much its own beast and i've not played the other ps1 games maybe they're all very similar but i, I was expecting to kind of be doing these like long easy drifts and it's all about yeah. like you're going to get around the corner you're not going to hit the edge but like can you get the speed whereas this one was much more like can you just not touch the edge as you go right and if you make three mistakes you probably won't win is kind of the way yeah. it, it felt maybe that's part of its arcade roots of being like easy to play but hard to master mm -hmm. that this was the first ridge racer to not be in the arcade so maybe they still carry some of that over and then yeah. probably like, wasn't, it, doesn't it probably wasn't it doesn't the right choice it's not bad badly but i mm. it doesn't 
control smoothly i i guess and then with the the lower frame rate um yeah i was it, it didn't it didn't feel like the one that i had loved but this is mm. as i say a very unfair comparison like <laughs> psp one came out later and is much more powerful it's like a generation newer almost. <laughs> yeah 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 so i i don't please don't comment so like i, I realize it's an unfair comparison but it's the only comparison i have because it's my yeah. lived experience so it's what else can i do but i would say you know you're saying go and play the psp one i'd say if this if it looks interesting go and play it like it is a cool it's a cool time capsule it's literally like especially because it's so centered around the year 2000 it really does like transport you back there and if you have any interest in anything like that then i would definitely check it out and also the music so yeah. actually also want to mention the music as of thursday last week it's all now on Spotify for all the whole oh, series. Cool. So I listened to Rotterdam remix from Ridge Race. That, <laughs> that is not that is not a good song. I, no. listen, I listened to that one earlier today. I was playing yeah, a bit of the PSP like, one, and I specifically selected that one. And I was like, I remember us really talking about this. Well, we song were laughing. We thought it was funny. Yeah, that's, but I couldn't remember whether we liked it or like. I, I, I knew I knew it was silly, but I didn't know if we liked it. But it was stupid, yeah. or if it, but I was like, oh no, it's just awful and like, it's like really notable yeah. but the rest yeah. of the a lot of the music of that game is good mm. cool uh okay shall we put it on the list yeah let's put it on the list are you ready yep i am ready where well let's first say this is the 58th entry on the mm. list do you have a yes uh, is... a zone that you think it would belong it's a hard place, this one, because I do feel like it absolutely nails what it's going for. And it's being... I feel like I need to... My own opinion and my own emotions need to override what I think of the game, because the game is really good. <laughs> so I can't... I don't feel like it can't go below 20, but at the same time, did I have that much fun playing it in 2024? So every time you say the game is really good at that voice, you make it sound worse. Like it's like it's good, it's good, isn't you, it? Do you know what it sounds good. like? It sounds like like say say if I am like gonna house it someone's house, yeah, and they're leaving <laughs> and I keep going, I will not rob you. Honestly, I am not I am not gonna steal and look 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 at it. I am not gonna steal anything. And every time I say that makes it more seem not true. <laughs> that okay, that's literally it is, what it feels okay, like. Okay, I do not mean to sound like that. It is true. The game is good, it's just old. That's okay. where I handle it. I'd, and I don't know where it should go because it's definitely, I mean, I had fun with it and I enjoyed the vibes. I I feel like it needs to go in the top 20, but I don't know if I can put it there. <laughs> so let's, let's look at another driving game on the list. Let's look at Driver San Francisco because that is mm -hmm. another game that set out to do a thing and absolutely nailed it. And I would... I certainly had more fun with it. It sounds like from at least your mm. discussion of it, let's try and get recency bias and get that, put that in the closet. I think it mm. shouldn't go above Driver San Francisco. How about this? I had more fun with Driver San Francisco, but I actually think Ridge Racer Type 4 is better and will age better. Yeah, maybe. So I guess it's kind of, this is kind of coming back to our debate that we never really fully define of what is this list <laughs> like it's more about what the list is rather than the game like is this the list of like the games we had most fun with during the two weeks or is it a list of the best games like i always lean to like i want it just to be more of personal how much do we like it like mm. you could look up there's hundreds of lists people have made of like best games of all time ign's greatest games like based on that and it's not like yeah like those lists true, are a dime true. a dozen this is the only one which is our personal opinion um for for the game and so i feel like we don't have to lean too hard on like well it was really influential or well back in the day it was great and it was well like it's well how True. much fun did we have with it is what i yeah I yeah like. but do you do you think it's better than driver i i had more fun with driver san francisco i think driver san francisco like like it, they're very different tones for like they're driving so games. Different, yeah. Like for Driver San Francisco was like fun and silly and was like Driver San Francisco was a pleasant surprise because I didn't expect it to be as good as it was. Mm, I didn't expect mm. to enjoy it as much as I did. I thought it was going to be more mm -hmm. of a curiosity. Whereas 
Ridge Racer Type 4 I did enjoy, but was slightly an unpleasant surprise because mm-hmm. I thought it was going to handle more similar to other Ridge Racer games I had played. And so I was a bit like, oh, this is a bit more stiff. And I like I was I was prepared for like the graphics and other aspects mm. that have aged, but I wasn't expecting for me to not like the car handling um, that much. Like it was it wasn't bad, but I, I didn't love it. So it was almost an unpleasant surprise. I agree with you 100%. I agree with you 100%, but I feel like I've got more respect for Ridge Racer Type 4 than you do. But do you think... <laughs> Maybe. What about one below Phoenix Wright, one above Halo Infinite? Hmm. It's always Halo, isn't it? Well, because you said driver, and that's underneath driver, so... You know, you, you do keep saying that, like, it's set up to do a thing, and it absolutely nailed it. I I yeah. don't... You know, I had more fun playing Halo Infinite because I love... I'm a Halo multiplayer nut. Like, <laughs> just m- much more than, like, a racing game nut. Um, either way, I'm a nut. Okay, what about... That's, that, that's what, about <laughs> what about underneath Halo Infinite above Super Metroid? Well, I, no, I was going on to say, like, I don't think Halo Infinite nailed what they were attempting to do. Like, the campaign... I know some people yeah. like it. I, I think it, it fell short of their ambition, whereas Ridge mm. Racer Type 4, I don't think it did fall short of its ambition. So I was actually kind of being a bit lenient, but you Ooh. kind of went on, went on ahead <laughs> to suggest lower. So you you were saying between Super Metroid and Warcraft 2? Oh, and Halo Infinite. Oh, so above, above Super Metroid. Super Metroid, it kind of, Ridge Racer Type 4 reminds me of Super Metroid in a lot of ways. So it's like it was older. It kind of nailed what it was trying to do, but when you play it, you do feel it creaking. A little bit. Yeah, I think Super Metroid actually is a bit creakier. Mm, def- well, it's older. <laughs> but yeah, I agree. I agree. I think so. Yeah, but if, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. So it would be 34 under Halo mm. above above Samus and Super Metroid. Yes, and I think that's actually a great spot for that game. Like, this is a game that came out in 1998 and it is trading blows with Halo Infinite, which is <laughs> yeah. mad. But it is good. It, I, I want to stress that it's good and I promise I'm not just saying that and making it sound bad. It, it is um, a cool game. <laughs> the cars do control better than the Warthog if we're going to do, <laughs> do that. Time. You can you don't have to control it with two analog sticks, which I mean, well, did you, I have a soft spot for the Warthog, but yeah, I mean, it's not. Did you not see the um, Ridge Racer controller, the Negicon? No. So, so what was a, that released with? It was for the it was either for Rage Racer or for this game. It was yeah. a Namco made controller for, for Ridge Racer. And it was you twisted it like this. So you the handles twisted and that was your left and right turning. Okay. And people were like, Oh yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> it's like the but I guess we never had good controllers, so people thought it was really good. Yeah, I guess but compared it, to like I guess like analog sticks weren't really even like I mean they were kind of about by then, but not like uniform so let me send you i'll send you a picture if you don't mind adding the picture to the video version just so Uh, you can see how mad this thing is i'll send it to you in this chat ah i see yes you twist the controller to steer and people love that no analog sticks either it's just my um my youtuber brain is immediately being like what game could there be a challenge to try and complete a different, you know, to play a different game in it? Like, my first thought is, like, what what would be the challenge? Like, can I beat, like, Dark Souls using the Ridge Racer controller? Yeah, yeah. Well, best of three, maybe. Best of three. Yeah, well, we'll see, we'll see how rare those are and how expensive yeah, they are on eBay. Yeah. But that could be funny. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I think respectable. A lot of respect for Ridge Racer. Yeah, I, it's I, cool. Like, the, the cool. vibe, the tone, like... Just the the art style, like I think, is um, really impressive, and for the most part, holds up to this day. You know, and it is really mm. just those those technical limitations of the fact that it's from pretty ancient hardware, which is the the kind of only real warts on it. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people. I'm going to get hate for saying a PS1 N64 generation was lame, but those games are hard to go back to. Yeah, it was it was a transition period. Like they were mind blowing at the era because you know suddenly. You were seeing, you know, games that you were almost having to use your imagination to, to <laughs> be in. You could actually be in and control the camera and explore in a 3D space, but they hadn't worked out how to do that yet. Yeah, and so yeah. they are a, a tough, a tough era to to go back to. Yeah, and also with this with Ridge Racer, it was like it's not a kids' game; it's an adults' game. 
that was the vibe of it. It was like I'm playing an, I'm playing a game my dad would like, which is really yeah. cool. <laughs> it's kind of what I was talking about, but then it was still an arcadey racer, so it would still yeah, be yeah, like fun, yeah. fun for kids. It's really yeah. it's only the presentation that made it seem like that. There was nothing in the gameplay um, yeah. that really made it seem like that. And I guess some of the the stories were were quite adult, I guess, surprisingly mm. so. Mm. Um, right, congratulations to Ridge Racer Type Four. At number 34 on the list, uh, I'll read out kind of just that area. So from 31, uh, just about holding its position is a San Fran- uh, Driver San Francisco. Then Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney at 32. At 33 is Halo Infinite. 34, new to the list, is Ridge Racer Type 4. And at 35, uh, push down one space, is Super Metroid. Very nice. Well done, Ridge Racer Type 4. Claps for that. Yep. Um, would you like to hear what's coming up? I would love to. So next time... We have the incredibly joyless L.A. Noir on the 22nd of March. And then, despite the fact that we try not to do games that are too similar in a row, we have a guest coming on who's picked GTA V on the 5th of April. Yeah. So we're going to be doing, in four episodes, we would have done Yakuza Like a Dragon, open world game. Then we would have done L.A. Noir, open world game. And then GTA V, open world, and by Rockstar as well, or published by Rockstar. So there we go. And then after that, We're figuring out some other stuff for some guests, but that's what we've got confirmed for now. It is a little bit unfortunate. Maybe it will make an interesting (laughs) comparison. I guess the one thing I'll say, like, in its favour is if we were going to do L.A. Noir and GTA V, like, we're doing them the right way round. (laughs) (laughs) You'd you'd really want to do L.A. Noir first. So I guess that is maybe the the saving grace. You don't want to to be following GTA V when they get off the stage. (laughs) Well, I'm quite looking forward to GTA V because I didn't play that much of it back when it came out, so... And I haven't played it since. Yeah, so and it's cool. When, whenever it's like, oh, the guest has chosen it, it's like, like they must really like it. Like, what is it about this game that they really like? Well, he he said to me, oh, there's a clue. He uh, said, does GTA Online count? And I'm now, I said, no, it doesn't. What do you think? I mean, it sounds like that is a reason why he chose it. So I feel like, why shouldn't it count? That's part of the game. It's it's like it's, it's, it's free with this. It's in the package. It's not DLC. It's I know. it's in the game. Well, it wasn't, I mean, I it wasn't. It wasn't there on the day it came out, right? It was later. No, but it's yeah, but it was in. It's there now. That it's that now. core that core yeah. game. Does that mean we have to play GTA? That's online? why I was That's- like, I've got to play the game and play online in two weeks. Like, come on. <laughs> no, I think we we should if if that it sounds like that is a, like as as I guess the reason you would say no is because it almost feels like its own game at this point. Like it mm-hmm. almost feels separate. But I think you know if that's if if that's a, a key reason for for why he chose this game, then I think I think it sh- we should at least discuss it, at least hear his thoughts on it, and maybe at least <laughs> dip our toe in a little bit, like to to see what that that is. Because I'm assuming you've never played it at all. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, that's a good segue as well. So. Bonus points, Patreon members. I'm speaking to you right now. There will be some GTA 5 game nights coming up in the Discord. Because if we have oh. to play it online, I'm not going to play it at random. <laughs> so <laughs> we could get that sorted. I'm sure everyone on Earth has a copy of the game at this point. So I'm sure we can do it on there. Yeah, cool. Um, I also just want to shout out, we recently did a tier list of all of the buttons on... Mostly the PS5 controller, but then we also kind of chose a few other famous mm. PlayStation buttons. Um, and that's probably our most popular tier list that we've done, just looking at the comments. Yeah, like, really there was a well. lot of conversation about it, a lot of really funny comments. Um, so if you haven't seen that yet, um, it's, it's it's good fun. Obviously, it's silly, but like we, we, we kind of go quite in-depth kind of comparing, like, is left on the D-pad better than right on the D-pad? Mm, like, let's talk about this. So uh, that was quite good fun. And then uh, we are, spoiler alert, planning to do at least one more similar uh, tier list as well. So if you did enjoy mm. that one, keep an eye on the channel. That will be coming up at some point within the next few weeks. Yeah, uh, I think that is everything from us today. Okay. Cool. Awesome. So thank you everyone for watching or listening. We'll be back in two weeks with the main podcast talking about L.A. Noir and um, Noir. the extra credit, of course, our other podcast, which comes out every week. We don't do this one. Uh, that will be coming up uh, next Friday, uh, but that's Patreon only. So if you want to find out more about that, there will be a link in the description or probably on the pinned comment as well if you're on YouTube. But apart from that, cheers for watching or uh, listening and we will see you all later. Bye. Cheers. Bye.